Excuse me. Uh, June 8th, and this is a um, sports jacket optional meeting this evening. Um, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on with our agenda. Uh, our next item is adjustments to the agenda. We have a new clerk for the evening. Linda Poole is here in Mary Brenda's place. Thank We're you. Happy that she agreed to join us. Thank you for being here tonight, Linda. You're welcome. Adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. And uh, the next item is approval of the May school board minutes for our regular meeting, which was on May 11th, and the special meeting on May 25th. Any adjustments required to those minutes? Uh, we'll move right on then to uh, comments by our high school representatives. It's, a, it's, it's okay, it's a tie optional evening. Hi, I'm Alicia, and um, the year is quickly coming to an end, and we're just going to wrap up on the recent events that took place in high school. Um, AP exams happen in early May, I think the beginning half of May. Um, Graduation is this Friday at 2 o'clock at Fort Williams. Um, our last band concert, do you, do you know the date of when that happened? Um, June 3rd? June 3rd, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, that was June 3rd, and um, that was our last spring concert. Um, we had the chorus and the band there, both bands presenting, and we recognized our seniors that were leaving. Um, Finals begin for underclassmen this Thursday, and they go until next Wednesday, the last day of school. Um, senior finals, are they they're mm -hmm. still? Senior finals are wrapping up tomorrow. Uh, the, last, uh, the last two periods um, are going to be taken tomorrow, and uh, the seniors will be done with their academic endeavors for the high school year. You're not supposed to smile so much. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know. It's a bittersweet moment. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to help. Um, I, was, I would actually just um, uh, not encourage but invite anyone who wants to attend the high school graduation. Uh, it will be at 2 p.m. Um, this, uh, this Friday uh, at Fort Williams. I'm sure there will be plenty of seating and uh, the seniors would all really appreciate it if uh, anyone uh, would like to show up and wish them farewell. Um, we uh, have uh, some new members to introduce to you. Alicia and I won't be doing this next year. Uh, because I won't be here, and Alicia did not reply, but uh, <laughs> uh, she loved it this year, I believe me, uh, and her. Uh, but we do have two new members uh, to, to introduce you, one of uh, whom is here tonight. Uh, this is Elizabeth Geyer. She's a sophomore at uh, Cape High School. You want to say something? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a sophomore, and thanks. Um, <laughs> And I'm really excited to be the school board rep next year. I'm really excited to see how the school board actually works and how decisions are made for our school. And so I think I'm going to have a great time next year. We uh, do have another member. She won't be acting as the, uh, as the sole um, representative for the school. John Crafts, uh, a junior currently at Cape High School, who will be a senior next year, uh, w um, would be here, but he has a uh, track, uh, track and field engagement that he was already uh, committed to. So mm -hmm. he is uh, with us here in, in spirit, I suppose. But he, he will see you uh, next year. Okay. Any questions? Questions for Jeff or Alicia? Please. Yes, John. Could you share with us who your keynote speaker will be at your graduation? Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's right. It'll be Mr. Curtis, uh, 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 Kerry Curtis, uh, physics teacher and uh, science mentor in Cable High School. Um, other questions? 
Yes. I just have a comment about um, how wonderful my whole family thought Tommy was. It really was um, terrific, and we enjoyed it very much. It was. It was a very impressive display of uh, talent in the high school. I just want, on behalf of the board, I just want to thank um, you, Jeff, and Alicia for the wonderful job that you did in keeping us informed. Um, it was very helpful, and you both did a, a great job, got some good public speaking experience. Um, Jeff, tell us what's uh, going on for you next year. Uh, next year, I'll, um, I'll be at uh, Boston College uh, out, in, out in Chestnut Hill over, over near the uh, biggest city closest to us, and um, I'll be studying public communications uh, with a possible minor in music. Terrific. Good luck to you. Thank you. Alicia, what, what, what's happening in the summer for you? Staying around here. <laughs> Not much. What uh, better place to hang out than yeah. sunny Cape Elizabeth? Right. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks for the good job. We appreciate it. Um, comments now from our middle school representatives. Hi, I'm Amelia, and this is Marianne. Um, school, the school has just gotten off to, um, has been a great year for us, the middle school, and everything's pretty much gone really well this year. Um, we're wrapping it up with uh, the fifth grade has an outdoor experience, um, just to finish their outdoor experience program um, at Too Late State Park on Thursday and Wednesday. And um, sixth and fifth grade social was last Wednesday, and that was a big success. There was a lot of games and karaoke, snacks and movies. That was really fun. It was a lot different because we had it in the middle school right after school, so, but it was a good success. Um, the seventh and eighth grade dance was Friday, and that was really neat because the Parents Association put it on, and there was a lot of decorations and a lot of fun things this time, so. Um, the spring track championships were today at 12.30, and they got over around five. Um, those went pretty well. We have a small team, but other than that, it went well. Um, and report cards are going to be picked up on say. Oh, and also, um, Tuesday morning, the seventh and eighth grade awards will be held, and that's our half day, which is the last day of school. All right, uh, good evening. All four grades will be going to the beach on Monday. Um, the fifth grade will be going to Crescent Beach. The sixth and seventh grades will be going to Scarborough Beach. And the eighth grade will, of course, be going to Old Orchard Beach. Um, eighth grade recognition night will be on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Uh, certificates will be handed out to the students, and the seventh and eighth grade chorus will be performing for us. Should be very good. Um, Step up day will also be on Thursday. Um, each grade will learn about the grade they're going to enter next year. The eighth grade is going into the high school and seventh grade going to eighth grade. You know. um, finally, we would like to um, thank the school board for allowing us to come here every month and uh, inform you on what's happening in the middle school. It's been um, very educational. <laughs> Any questions? Questions? for Amelia or Marianne? I don't see any. Um, the two of you have done a terrific job this year. We do appreciate you being here um, each month with us and keeping us up on what's happening in the middle school. You've done a, a very, very good job. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good summer. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is communications. Communications from board members. Kevin. On May 27th, I attended the graduation at Portland Arts and Technical High School. I'd like to congratulate all the CAPE students who graduated from the various programs there and to remind the public in general that PASS does not provide special education programs. PASS provides alternative programs for students who are looking for an alternative type of education. And uh, I think everyone should take a real serious look at PASS when considering their academic career. And Kevin will be the new chair of the PASS Advisory Committee next year. Well, congratulations. 
Good. Other communications? Um, this is a time of change. Uh, we have uh, Jeff moving down to Boston, um, an exciting place to be. Uh, and uh, this is also the last uh, school board meeting um, for Beth Currier, who is um, uh, uh, not going to be on the board any longer and is going to be putting her energy into, I'm sure, a number of other things. And as well for Cynthia Moles, who um, will be um, also moving on to exciting, uh, exciting adventures uh, beyond the, the uh, Cape School community. And I have actually um, a presentation uh, that I'd like to make. Three years ago, uh, after a superintendent search that left us superintendent-less, um, we were very fortunate to find an experienced educational leader to steer us through what was to be an interim year um, until we could conduct another search. And search we did, and stood up we were. And so fortunately, again, um, we, we were very fortunate to have our interim leader consent to stay on with us, uh, this time for a two-year stint. And it's been such a pleasure uh, to work with uh, Dr. Cynthia Moles, um, her professionalism and knowledge, um, feistiness and good humor um, have served our community well. And uh, at this moment, we'd like to uh, extend our appreciation to Cynthia and recognize her with a gift. site is important to you. It is. This is Peak Island. That's right. That, thank you. This should Very be something nice. else. And you've listened to me for three years, so you won't get a speech tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. there's, there's, there's. Um, I guess only, probably only Beth's family and those of us who have worked closely with her as board members uh, and administrators truly have an understanding for the energy and dedication and conviction that Beth Currier basically puts into any task that she takes on. For me, uh, the last three years is sort of like being in a class um, with the kid who always does her homework and who invests loads of extra effort into her work and basically just outshines the rest of the class. And she makes it look so easy. Beth has worked tirelessly on the school board for the last six years, and I can tell you six years is a long time. If um, my past three years is any, any uh, basis for judgment. Um, Beth has served on just too many committees for me to try to list them now. She did serve as board chair for two years and was clearly a driving force uh, in the construction and the furnishing of our new school complex. Beth has never shied away from tackling tough issues and much has been accomplished because of her contributions. Beth, uh, this is the time that we want to thank you for your contributions. Thank you. 
Probably long island. Oh, a place that I love very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Very big. Thank you. You've listened to me for six years, so I don't really need to talk very long either. Um, when I think back, Libby, my littlest, was two and a half when I started doing this. And, you know, a lot has happened since then. Um, she's, you know, going on to fourth grade, so it's been a long time. I guess the only thing I'd say is um, I probably learned more doing this than anything, so it was really a gift to me. And um, thank you for that, and thank you for letting me get to know all of you. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Also under communications, um, uh, last year and again this year, um, I've asked uh, board members to uh, take a few moments, if they wished, um, to reflect on the school year, um, to reflect on anything that was particularly um, important or momentous to them, um, or uh, perhaps uh, just something that they felt uh, particularly good about. Um, as well, the, principal, uh, the principal's reports, um, we had hoped uh, to get that same kind of reflection as we close uh, this school year. So I'd like to invo invite board members to um, uh, have their opportunity to reflect on the year. Sure, I'd be glad to, to start. Uh, in thinking about uh, some good things that have happened this year, and there are many, many of them, uh, two of them come to, to light immediately, and I think the, the first one is uh, the successful hiring of, of our new superintendent to be starting in a few weeks. Uh, the second, I, I might come of surprise to some people, but uh, a highlight of my year, once again, has been the, the budget process. And uh, although it was rocky and a little bit more difficult than this year than it has been in past years, uh, I think the process itself has held up very well, and, uh, and I look forward to doing the budget again next year. Uh, in the five years that I've been on the school board, uh, I, I've always looked to Beth uh, for guidance and information. Uh, Beth, as George said, she, she was always the one that knew the most about uh, virtually all the topics that we had to work with. And uh, I've always found on difficult issues, I've found myself uh, trying to think now, how would Beth think on this? Or, or, or I can't wait to hear Beth speak on this. Is it, uh, uh, I've always appreciated uh, Beth's viewpoints, uh, not always agreed with her, uh, but uh, uh, her viewpoints are honest and from the heart, and uh, I wanted to thank her and, ap and appreciate her for helping my experience on the school board. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Cynthia, for the terrific effort that you've put in for three years. I really appreciate it also. Marie? Um. The, I guess what comes to mind for me as well is the superintendent search, and this was the first time that um, I was involved in this, but just the whole process with the whole board, all of the administrators, and people from the community. Um, I just feel as though the applications that we received, um, they were, I mean, a lot of very talented people out there, and I think it's important for people in the community to know that this was um, a community decision amongst all the people that were involved. And it was basically a unanimous decision. So we're all in it together. And hopefully this is going to work out very well for us. OK, thank you. Other comments? John. You know, I wish to thank the students and the parents and the administrators. They're the ones that make this a successful year. And they've all been very helpful to me, not having any students in the school system. I've been kept well up to date uh, by Tom and Nancy and, and Peter with all their informative newsletters. And I've uh, spent a lot of time working with Pauline in reference to the budget. I think you look back, uh, all this time has been uh, well spent. And I also reiterate the search for the superintendent. Uh, we had an excellent uh, rapport with all the members on the board. And I know you'll be very pleased and very satisfied with the new superintendent. 
And I also wish to thank uh, Cynthia for the past two years. Uh, she, was on the uh, she was in her position when I came on the board, and she's been most helpful. Okay. Kevin? I suppose I, too, would like to comment on the superintendent search, only because I thought the process really worked. And of course, it was successful. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to Tom Forsella's arrival, although I will miss Cynthia, who was <laughs> quite kind in tutoring me in my job over the last two years and uh, provided me with uh, a lot to think about, as has Beth. Beth and I don't always agree on some of the topics, but Beth's comments always make me think. And if there's nothing else, I know that Beth is sincere in her desires to make a, uh, a better school system. So it's made me give a lot of thought and uh, over a lot of issues and flip my position several times before I finally come to a decision. And I think that's a good way to be, and it's a good prod to have when you've got somebody, uh, you know, sort of the good guy and the bad guy on different shoulders whispering in your ears which way to go and helping you make that debate. Um, aside from that, um, today I attended an event that I think is really what the Cape Elizabeth School System is all about. And that was the award ceremony for the underclassmen today. Um, unfortunately, I missed the senior portion of it because it just got too hot. And uh, I did miss that. But I watched student after student after student get up to be recognized for academic excellence. Now, I appreciate a good sports team. I appreciate a good band. I enjoy the extracurricular and co-curricular activities that go on in school and in those areas at which we excel. But to watch all of these students get up today to be recognized for purely academic excellence was a real pleasure. But that leads me to an area that I am not as delighted about, but is worth mentioning. And that is watching all of these students get up there and be recognized for their academic excellence, I also know that we're not reaching all of our students and that we need to continue our efforts to reach all of our students all of the time. And finally, I appreciate the way the building administrators continue to work with students rather than on students. Okay, thank you. Beth. I'll say a few <coughs> quick words. Um, the superintendent search has been gone over a number of times, and yes, thank goodness it was successful. I don't think we could have twisted Cynthia's arm to stay longer, and it's so important for the system to have that continuity and move on to someone who wants to stay. Um, we really appreciate Cynthia really spending three years with us. Thank you. Um, the pool renovation hasn't been mentioned. It has. We, I have worked for years to try to get somebody to look at that facility and then finally take it out of the school realm. So for me, that was a wonderful thing to have finally have happened. And we will have a beautiful new pool, hopefully December 1st. Um, maybe a little later, but hopefully then. Um, I guess other highlights for me um, would be mentioning Claire's wonderful attention to special ed and being successful in some very important um, issues that we dealt with this year. Welcoming Marla Carmen to our system. Um, it was wonderful to get to know you a little bit before I um, left. And well, I won't be leaving too far. Um, as always, Pete and Tom and Nancy, I really enjoy um, working with the principals in the building. Pauline and Sue Weatherby, um, as always, the detail is wonderful. I'm a detail person. I appreciate everything you do to get the right answers and do things um, the right way. Really appreciate it. And Dwight, I didn't work with you too much, but I really appreciate all the work you do also. So um, those would be the highlights for me. Thanks. Thanks, Beth. Jennifer? Well, it's easy going last because you don't really have to say anything. <laughs> Everyone has said pretty much everything that I would want to say. Um, working on the budget, getting to know the administrators better, and part of the reason I ran for school board was to work on the superintendent search, which uh, I think we're all extremely happy with the results of that. Um, and I, too, would like to thank both Cynthia and Beth for their commitment and hard work to the school board. Um, I'm sure there are a few issues that Beth and I must have agreed on throughout the year. Um, 
Did we agree on a few more than you and Ben? What? Did yeah. we agree on a few more than you and Ben? <laughs> Probably. There's, I mean, there's some there. But uh, anyway, it's been um, a learning experience for me, and I've really enjoyed it. So thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Cynthia, do you? It's been a wonderful three years. Thank you. It's all good. <laughs> it's been good in everything. Good. I guess I'd just reflect, um, as, I, as I thought about this, I thought about um, what I've seen to be some really nice and incremental improvement in our goal setting, um, working with uh, the administrative team and the board, really feeling like it was one team, and um, also the, the uh, process for monitoring progress against those goals. Um, I feel again has has measurably improved, and 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 uh, and I see that we have opportunities to make that stronger um, this next go around. Um, a second thing that I reflected on uh, was a significant uh, jump and a, a measurable measurable difference in the amount of community and parental participation that we've seen at board meetings, at workshops, and so on. And I think that's a very positive trend. Um, I think it's something that we need to continue to work on and, 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 um, and increase those numbers, particularly folks that don't have school, school uh, age children, to get them more involved in the process and more involved with the work that we're doing. And then lastly, um, I was uh, thankful for yet another year of um, uh, the, the staff um, and, and uh, students actually creating and providing um, a safe uh, learning environment for, um, for everyone within the community. So I think that's uh, a tre tremendous thing to be very happy about. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move on to the superintendent's report. So this is my chance to thank our long-term and dedicated teachers. And we do this in five-year increments, and these are the people that we will be honoring in the fall for their years of service to Cape Elizabeth. With five years experience, we have Linda Alfiero, Hannah Ashley, Catherine Fluff, White Ely, Sarah Franklin, Tony Giadoni, Tina Johnson, Kerry Curtis, Marsha McDonald, Jamie Michaud, Steve Price, Ben Raymond, Norm Richardson, Tom Robinson, Deborah Sampson, Sally Tamaro, and Christine Trahan. I hope I said staff, not teachers, because this really is the entire staff. 10 years experience, we have Elaine Brownell, Paul Casey, Eileen Conley, Janet Faber, Peggy Fogg, Michelle Gagney, Sherry Gawa, Ann Holt, Suzanne Janelle, Sue King, Sarah Lewis, Ralph McLean, John Nielsen, Gary Record, Sherry Robinson, Gail Schmader, Carolyn Sloan, Mary Smaha, Susie Van Wy. Those are 10 years. At 15 years, we have Stephanie Betzel, David Brown, Sandy Burley, Lynn Evans, Kelly Hassan, and Andy Strout. Moving up to 20 years, we have Maggie Beals, Charlotte Musrell, Pam Vos, and Dick Whitten. Moving up to 25 years, we have Hayden Atwood, Gary Lenoy, Rick Madden, Susan Robinson, Julie Salikas, and we have one 30-year person, Ken Plummer. We appreciate them all and thank them for their years of service to our students. That's terrific. Do you have a resignation? I do. <laughs> I have yes. one resignation. Uh, Lynn Lockhart, who is a Spanish teacher <coughs> in high school, has tended her resignation. May I ask a question? Yes, sir. The letter that I have from, I think it's Mrs. Miles, says that she's... She's retired, and that's later on the agenda. Is that what the letter says? I agree. I think the letter said resigning. It says resign. Yeah. Retiring. She not there. Yeah. The retirements, the board has to approve, whereas resignations you do not. That's why I have it down under action items. Okay. Um, we're going to move on now uh, the, to the next item on the agenda, which is the principal's report, and we'll start with uh, Pete at the high school. Um, start briefly with most recent uh, events. Uh, it is 
obviously a busy time of the year. There have been many different opportunities to see the kind of uh, excellence that our students are producing in, in all kinds of ways. We've had students in recent weeks at uh, national debate uh, championships, at national math competitions. Um, as you know, athletically, uh, tennis, uh, both boys and girls tennis uh, did extremely well this year. Uh, girls track finished third in the state. Uh, the baseball, varsity baseball team was just eliminated today in the Western Maine uh, finals uh, in, a, in an outstanding game, four to three. Uh, the boys lacrosse team uh, won uh, their 10th straight state championship. Uh, that kind of uh, expectation weighs heavily, and I, and I, uh, I applaud uh, coaches and athletes uh, for continuing that streak. Artistically, um, uh, all you have to do is walk into the high school and see the types of things that are on the walls at all times. The new display cases are working out extremely well. Richard Roethlisberger and, and uh, Mary Hart are doing a wonderful job of keeping them filled with student treasures. Uh, and I look forward to walking in every morning because I don't know what's going to be there this time, and it's, uh, it's always exciting. Uh, musically and dramatically, we, uh, as uh, Alicia and Jeff uh, raised the issue of uh, Tommy and, and the final choral and instrumental music concerts, both were outstanding chances to see students uh, uh, working at their very best. <clears throat> I think to try to look over the year and uh, come up with highlights would, uh, would, would be impossible. It, it has, uh, for the most part, been an outstanding uh, year, especially um, from the standpoint of student achievement. In almost any way that you can measure it, our students keep stretching themselves, keep pushing themselves. And one of the things that I mentioned at this morning's award ceremony uh, is that I thank the entire student body for creating an atmosphere where students can stretch and not feel afraid uh, to stand out. Um, I don't know whether our students recognize how lucky they are to have such peers. I've uh, worked in schools where the prevailing ethos was not to uh, achieve, but rather to hide your talents, uh, and, and they all push each other. The, uh, by, as I say, by almost any measure, they are uh, successful academically. Um, while this year we, we thought that uh, we have uh, an outstanding senior class, and we do, um, it would be easy to assume then that there will be uh, a, a drop off um, after a, a class as, as strong as this one. I don't see it coming. The, uh, this year's junior class uh, has the same number of uh, commended students in the National Merit Program. The averages uh, for the SATs, I expect, while well, this year's SAT averages will be based on the senior class, I expect that we will at least equal what we've been doing, if not increase. The performance on uh, advanced placement tests uh, continues to be very strong with an increased number of students taking the tests. The college admission, admissions record for this year's seniors is a wonderful thing to behold, and I'll have a report for you by the next workshop uh, of both the uh, colleges where students were accepted and then the individual plans uh, of each of the students where they, where they plan to, uh, to go next year. It's been rewarding to, in, in this my second year to uh, have a group of uh, alums that I can talk with that I know uh, about their experience and when they come back to the various events at the high school I try to take the opportunity to talk with them about uh, what we have prepared them for and what we have fallen short uh, on and I'm extremely encouraged by their reports. Um, they, uh, they, they report that they're feeling extremely well prepared um, and holding their head up with uh, students uh, in, from schools all over the country, large and small. I feel privileged to work with this group of students, uh, the student body. It is, um, it, is, it is a wonderful group to work with. At the same time, I feel very privileged to work with the faculty that we have at the high school. Uh, I would describe the, the faculty as a, a very strong, very independent faculty. And that can some, independent can sometimes be a euphemism. Uh, for very difficult to work with. Uh, I don't mean it as a euphemism at all in this case. I think 
that we're making uh, several strides forward in trying to take an excellent school and make it even better. One of the things that I appreciate about our faculty in particular is that they're able to uh, debate strongly uh, and then uh, without rancor and then support decisions that are made. Uh, again, uh, I've worked in other schools where that is not the case, where good honest debate uh, deteriorates into uh, disrespect for one another and anger. Uh, that has not been the case in the high school and, and we have moved forward on some issues that, that often will uh, strangle uh, high school faculty. Things like uh, moving into a new schedule for next year that, we're ho that we've already seen evidence uh, that this new schedule has worked in one regard uh, and that is in the, um, the uh, release of the, of the gridlock that our old schedule was in in terms of trying to schedule individual students into the classes that they would like and in terms of moving the classes around uh, to try to balance sections and so forth. Uh, Sharon Merrill and Buena Snell uh, reported, me, reported to me at the end of this uh, scheduling process that it was the easiest scheduling process they've gone through in several years. We, did, we were able to even do away with the um, drop ad arena, which used to be a day uh, or a half day wasted uh, on trying to figure out how to make your schedule work uh, because uh, such a huge percentage of the students um, were able to schedule their first choices of electives and requirements. Uh, there was just no need for uh, the drop ad arena, so we were able to save uh, academic time and concentrate on things more important than worrying about how to get a class into A period and, and so forth. We uh, await the results uh, of, the, uh, of our other hope for um, improvements uh, with the schedule. We'll see whether, uh, whether it works well for students and for faculty to have the 85 minute period once a day. I suspect it will, uh, but I look forward to it. We have a group of faculty that's been working very hard and has now uh, convinced the, whole, the faculty as a whole and has been uh, talking with the junior class about an alternative to the end of the senior year. Um, our next step on that will be meeting with parents of, um, uh, well, of any students, but we'll, we'll, we'll target uh, next year's senior class, but uh, I think it'll be of interest to uh, parents of students all the way through the system. We're looking at a... Uh, uh, a model that allows students to uh, try to use what they've learned in some uh, different types of projects at the very end of the year. We're talking about basically the last four weeks of the uh, senior year. Part of it is to combat what is known in all schools as senioritis. We are not immune, although I do think our, our seniors have kept their nose to the grindstone uh, much more than uh, is typical. Uh, this year. In fact, several of them have mentioned to me that w when's the slack come? We're working harder now than we did uh, earlier in the year. But we are looking at a combination, uh, and, and it will be uh, to a large extent a uh, student's option uh, of uh, community service opportunities, individual uh, independent study projects, uh, job shadowing experiences, career related uh, experiences, uh, kind of a, a choice of different options. Uh, students seem to be, be very enthusiastic, the faculty is, is backing it, and as I say, our next step will be to go to the parents uh, in a similar way that we um, looked at the class rank issue this past year. I suspect it will be a mid-August meeting when people are back in town uh, but not yet fully engaged in the school year so that we have an opportunity to get feedback, digest it, see what uh, the questions are, and address them. Uh, we've moved forward uh, through the work of Joyce Bell, our, our research coordinator, uh, a, a topic that at the beginning of the year I would have thought uh, not impossible but improbable, and they've made tremendous progress with the uh, something that I had mentioned uh, uh, several months ago, and that is the setting up of common standards for research uh, uh, projects. Uh, we're, 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 Joyce is working with a committee of uh, representatives from each department, academic department, to come up with uh, common standards uh, so that a student is not hearing um, one expectation from one department and then go to the next research project in another department and have a different expectation. Uh, they've made tremendous progress on this and I think by the end of the summer uh, we will have those uh, common standards in place. Um, that is a 
first step. We, ta we tackled that one as a, as a first step because it was something that almost every department was engaged in. Um, from there, we can jump to many other common standards, uh, to, to even to the extremely difficult ones of uh, grading standards, um, things like that that, are, that always strangle uh, a school, but I think we're poised to be able to start uh, having good discussions about them. The resumption of the language exchanges has been, a, I think, a welcome addition. Uh, we'll be talking about one of those uh, requests uh, later in the evening. But in, as I say, these are examples. I think uh, Kevin's point is, uh, is a good one and it is well taken. Um, I think we have made progress with uh, how we work with students that are at risk, but I think we have a ways to go yet. Uh, uh, he is right. We, we haven't found ways to reach every single student yet. Uh, I think we've increased the percentage and we're constantly looking for ways. Uh, I, I've been amazed at the faculty's willingness to bend over backwards trying to make something uh, work for every student and not being uh, hamstrung with concern about, oh, what is the uh, exact policy that deals with this, but rather saying, okay, how can we, how can we work that will make something uh, happen for this student? I would like to thank the, the board uh, for their support. Um, and the, take this opportunity to thank the parents uh, for, for the support that we've received. Um, I, uh, there, are, there aren't many days, few but not many, that I don't consider myself blessed to be working with this combination of uh, uh, students, faculty, parents, and a board that's willing to work with uh, the uh, schools and the administration. Um, it's, it's a uh, wonderful experience and I thank you for having the opportunity. Thank you, Peter. Questions for Pete? Thank you very much. Um, middle school, Carmen. <clears throat> I, um, I'll start with the parents. Um, you heard the young ladies tell you about a successful dance that we had this past weekend, and a good part of that success was due to the Middle School Parents Association. If you can imagine trying to feed and, and keep from being thirsty 200 eighth grade, seventh and eighth graders, that was quite a feat. Uh, so <clears throat> we owed them a debt. Um, this past Monday, we had an orientation for the incoming fifth grade students that went very well. Uh, wrap up events for the end of the year uh, we are asking teachers for feedback on the final block schedule trial that we just had and then in addition to that we will be assessing all the block schedule trials that we've had over the course of this past year um, for the summer we are accepting proposals for uh, summer curriculum work from teachers now and um, <clears throat> The uh, library just put out a summer reading list for students and will be allowing students to check out books uh, for the summer and uh, this, past, this coming Thursday and be returned by um, early in September. As far as um, highlights for the year, um, I have a list of things I'd like to mention to you and I won't elaborate too much so I don't go over my allotted time. I know that Tom is anxious to uh, get on. <laughs> We've had uh, four block schedule trials during the course of this year, and, that, and as I just said, we'll be assessing those. Um, the middle school, as has the other schools, worked with the uh, safety committee uh, to put a safety plan in place. Uh, we were going to do a run through of that and decided it would be best done in uh, September uh, when new teachers are on board, new students are where they belong. Uh, so we will be trying that. Uh, I couldn't go without mentioning Andy Strout, who um, has the distinction of being the um, National Coach of the Year for Women's Tennis. Uh, we consider that a feather in our hat to have him at the middle school. Uh, the, one of the things that occurred this early in this year was a creation of a student assistance team that the middle school didn't have before. And we would like to expand that, and this summer, uh, we are going to have six teachers trained uh, uh, for one, in one of their workshops for uh, a full complement of student assistance team people. Uh, another event of this past year was a review of all the accelerated math and language arts programs. Um, a 
fantastic production of Oz by Steve Price and Company. And, and um, I don't have to tell you about all the work that went into that, including parents and students. <clears throat> this was the first year for the uh, formation and performance of an eighth grade jazz band. And uh, we also have a growing popularity of our all choral night. Um, we also have had a successful induction into the Camp Kiev experience this year. And, and this was the first year that all four classes have had an outdoor experience, all four classes in the middle school. Um, again, mentioning Mr. Strout, um, one of the highlights was the work that his advisory group did with the town committee for a youth center here in Cape Elizabeth. We also had a very successful career fair and uh, we are beginning to build a link with the high school for our advisory groups, having high school students come over uh, to talk with our middle schoolers. And with that, uh, I should mention that when they were there, I um, hopped from room to room to see what was going on, and, and they were uh, telling the middle schoolers, uh, by and large, what to expect next year at the high school. And in one group I was in, uh, one group specifically, they were talking about Mr. Ely and uh, Mr. Dawson, and they were complimenting them on the atmosphere that they created in the high school and making it such a supportive atmosphere for them, um, for them to be able to be as successful as they are. <clears throat> we had a middle school fair in October, and uh, finally, um, some of our middle school teachers this past year were presenters at the uh, Southern Maine Middle School Fair in Yarmouth uh, that I understand we will host at our middle school next year for Southern Maine. And finally, um, I would like to thank Beth and Cynthia for your contribution and uh, my fellow administrators. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Questions or comments? Thanks. Okay. Uh, now moving on to Pond Cove, Tom. Good evening. Before re just reviewing the highlights of the year, I wanted to mention two events that took place last week. One was a, a joint meeting of the CAPE Coalition and the uh, PCPA, and uh, it was very well attended. I thought it was very productive. I'm very pleased to see that the uh, CAPE Coalition is making some inroads into the elementary school parent community, and I, from the email that's been exchanged, after that meeting, I think we can, we can look forward to more results there. And second was the um, third annual research night that took place last night, um, last week. This started uh, a couple of years ago with, uh, it was rather intimate gathering. Each student got to present his or her research project and fielded questions from the audience. Last year, we couldn't quite do that because it expanded to 80 and we used the wing of the school to accommodate all that. And last week, we had over 200 kids with their own research, some help from the parents, uh, all shapes, sizes, sort, and uh, sources, but all, every one of those research projects was based on the standards of the research strand. I'm not sure how Shari does it, but she does a terrific job. And whenever I ask her about scaling it back, she just says no. So I guess we'll figure out a way to do it again next year. I'm sure Shari will. Reviewing. Um, the highlights of the Pond Cove year, I've narrowed them down to three. One of them, believe it or not, is school quality review. Uh, I think the, the process was very helpful for Pond Cove to go through. We, we prepared long and hard for it. We, we hosted the team. We, we took what feedback we got seriously and has provided us with specific goals for next year. Number two is looping. We've, we've talked about looping on and off for years, and finally this year, the teachers took the workshops. We had tough discussions about it at faculty meetings. We got parents involved early on and got the board involved with it. And I just came from a meeting tonight with uh, parents of the kids who are gonna be looping. It, it went very well, so I'm very pleased that that change has gone through with the cooperation of teachers and parents. Finally, in, in a general way, I think decision making, which has always been an issue uh, for any school, but particularly in Pond Cove, I think decision making and communication about it, in my opinion, really improved this year. Faculty meetings, team leader meetings, the teachers were able to sort out different levels of concerns, responsibility, and authority, have professional 
um, discussions and debates about it and, and make decisions. And I would say that this year, more than ever, the budget process is a reflection of that decision making, particularly with the involvement of parents. I, I've never seen such parent involvement. I, I take that as a real plus. From my perspective, the uh, results in these three, three major areas improve the general climate at the school, and it puts us in very good shape for following up on our goals for next year. That's terrific. Questions or comments for Tom? Thank you very much. That's the Calvin Coolidge version, I think, right? <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to committee reports. Um, the Finance Subcommittee met earlier. Keith, you want to? Thank you. Several things to report on. Uh, Harriman and Associates has recently uh, submitted a uh, mechanical systems uh, engineering report for us about our high school. Uh, basically, our systems in the high school, as is the high school, most of it, most of it's thirty something years old now, and uh, has been pieced together over the years and not much of it actually works together. So there's some uh, uh, some investment we're going to have to make over the next few years to bring that up to snuff. Uh, that was one thing that we talked about. We don't we don't know exactly uh, what those dollar figures are going to be, uh, but uh, many of the issues with uh, uh, heating and ventilation and electrical and that type of thing and plumbing and so forth need to be addressed in that building. Uh, we have some good news in a couple of different areas. Uh, we had a report from Sue Weatherby about the usage of facilities enterprise funds, which are the monies collected for the rental of the building and the grounds and so forth. And uh, that's ending up this year with a balance of about 11,600. And uh, the Finance Committee has uh, agreed to spend that money uh, on additional maintenance and cleaning staff uh, over the summer to keep our buildings uh, in the condition that they're in. Uh, so we're going to continue to uh, keep them in good shape. Uh, Pauline presented a, a, a food service report to us. Uh, we don't have the final numbers, but we expect that uh, it's going to end up being uh, pretty close to zero. Uh, we continue to speak about the uh, negligent uh, lunch money funds and uh, the decision's been made that anybody that has balance over uh, $100 after the 1st of July, that uh, amount will be sent to uh, collection. Uh, we have some even better news from the state subsidy line. Uh, when we initially finished our budget uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were anticipating a uh, about a $217,000 decrease in the monies from the state. Uh, if you've been following the, the budget process in the legislature at all, uh, that turns around now to actually be about a $4,000 increase. So we're uh, increasing our revenue uh, by about $221,000, uh, which is great news. Uh, the, the net effect of that is a, uh, about a nine cent per thousand decrease uh, in taxes for next year over last year. Uh, so last year, the uh, average tax on, on a $150,000 home was $80.41 for the school portion of the budget. Uh, and this coming year, it will actually go down to $67.46. So there's a lot of, uh, that's good news uh, about that. Uh, we, we also discussed briefly uh, our, our uh, accountants that audit our uh, our budget and, and expenditures and so forth each year uh, have recommended to us that we maintain a two to three percent uh, fund balance uh, undesignated fund balance at the end of each year that that, that is uh, sound fiscal management uh, right now we're just about at that two percent level so we're uh, we're still in the in the ballpark with that thank you Thanks, Keith. Uh, moving on to the Policy Subcommittee report. Kevin. Policy Subcommittee met on June 3rd. The entire Policy Subcommittee was present. Um, we will be discussing most of those issues later, so I won't report on every one. At this point, um, there is only one uh, issue that still remains open, and that deals with boosters and booster fundraising. Keith and I 
Keith Weatherby and I will be meeting to review a uh, recommended policy and start to try and hammer that out so we can put that one to bed by next September. Um, the other business, uh, again, we'll handle under unfinished business and new business. At this point, a new, uh, the next meeting has not been scheduled yet pending the uh, June 14th organization meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're gonna move on now to unfinished business and uh, there's a second reading on uh, the field trip policy. Which policy took the most amount of time to discuss? <laughs> this end, one. End of quiz. <clears throat> we considered two issues um, in dealing with field trips non-academic for a second reading. The first issue was do we need a policy or not? The unanimous feeling was that we would like not to need a policy. The other unanimous feeling was we absolutely did need to have a policy in place so that we are not spending huge amounts of time, time discussing this several times every year. And in the place of a policy, if a new board wishes to reopen that matter, they can pass it off to the policy committee at the time to do that. So I think I can report out to you that we all agree that that policy should be adopted and it is our strong recommendation to the entire board that we adopt that policy. The second issue we considered was whether two days was sufficient. In consultation with Sue Weatherby, which we did not bother to do the first time, um, we arbitrarily arrived at two days. Um, in speaking with Sue, Sue told me that she could do it in three, she would prefer four. And uh, we basically spent some time talking about should it be two, two days, three days, four days. The majority of the policy committee, with one exception, um, decided to compromise between the two and limit this to the last three days of school uh, for logistics purposes. Um, based on that, the majority of the policy committee is recommending to the entire school board that we adopt this policy tonight. Okay. Um, do you want to make a motion, Kevin? I would move that we adopt field trips, non-academic file IHOAA, as written with the one change of two days to three days. Okay, um, is there a second? Second. Keith, thank you. Um, discussion and comments, Beth. I'll just say I was the one policy member who didn't support the three days versus um, how it had been written as two days. Um, I am in complete agreement that we need something written down. I had been feeling like Beach Days was gone. We had made that decision years ago, and it came back to revisit, and we had a different board that came on. And I could hear what people were saying and compromise if we were doing Beach Days within the last two days of school. But I can't in good conscience push it to three or four, as part of the discussion was about. Um, and I guess, you know, I can just disagree with the other board members. I feel as the educational school board, the leaders of this community, who we are always asking for more time, we don't have time to get things done, um, that it's real important to keep school academic as long as we can at the end of the school year. So for those reasons, I won't be supporting it, um, but it's just the day issue. Okay, thank you. Other comments? I Marie. just have a, a question. Um, within the last three days of the school year, does that mean that it can happen on the last day of school as well? It did last year. They were all on the last day of school last okay. year. Okay. Other comments or, or questions? Um, I guess I just make my comment and um, I, I, think I, I think I hear um, what's being conveyed, Kevin, in terms of the policy subcommittee group. Um, not having had an opportunity to, to hear that, I guess I, I, I still don't uh, necessarily uh, see the need um, for a policy. 
Um, I'm going to, however, uh, defer to the judgment of the rest of the group and, and to your recommendation and, and will support this. Um, and I guess the reason why I've seen that is that it's subject to the superintendent's approval. Uh, my feeling is that we shouldn't be regulating this kind of stuff. Um, our administrators are held accountable for creating a rigorous academic program and, um, and I just as soon allow them the latitude to figure out um, how to do that. But um, again, having missed that discussion and uh, recognizing that it is a recommendation, I will support this. So, um, other comments or questions? Um, yeah, I'll yes. just say one thing. Um, I actually was going to err on the side of Sue Weatherby wanting four days um, for some closing activity. Uh, historically, Con <coughs> Cove has done stuff at the fort, um, and it's been outside of the three or four days, and it doesn't seem to interfere with their academics being done up until the last day. Um, so. Uh, I will vote for the three, but I would have preferred the four just for scheduling purposes. Okay. Other comments, John? I have a question of Cynthia. Has it been clarified if this day qualifies for a bona fide school day? It is if we report it. Excuse me? If we report it as a full school day, as a legal school day. We meaning the superintendent? Okay. I still have problems with what I just asked the superintendent in reference to the, am I correct, 175 qualified days? 175 student days. And uh, I agree with George, I don't feel it's necessary. This year, nothing was in place. Apparently everything went off smoothly. We have a new superintendent coming on board July 1st. I would like to hear his comments. Uh, another point of clarification, when you have a second reading is the second reading supposed to be as precisely what the first item was presented? It cannot be dramatically changed. Not dramatically changed. Change. If, it's a, if it totally changes the policy, then you have to go back. Okay, but something like this it qualifies. Two days to three, three days. days. We did not deem to be okay. a dramatic change. And the discussion in the first reading had to do with the time frame. So we, it was basically sent back. Kevin took it back to the policy okay. group to specifically wrestle with that a bit. Well, I'd have to go on record as saying that I'm not in favor of the, of the policy itself. Okay. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Um, other comments before we have a vote? Um, yes. Just very quickly, I, I do think it's necessary just so that it can't be changed every year at the whim of the current board. That's, that's the only reason I will support it. Okay. Um, with the discussion ended, um, uh, all, and the, uh, the motion is to accept this um, file IHOAA as policy. Uh, all those in favor? Five. All those opposed? Two. It's uh, the policy is approved. We're moving on now to new business, and that is um, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee positions for the fall. We have a fairly long, lengthy list. Uh, returning coaches, Andy Strout, Varsity Boys Soccer, Ben Raymond, JV Boys Soccer, Jeff Thorick, Freshman Boys Soccer, Charlie Carroll, Varsity Girls Soccer, Larry Greer, Boys Cross Country, Mary Ann Doss, Girls Cross Country, and Paul Jackson, Golf. Those are the high school uh, nominations. At the middle school, Sarah Randall, eighth grade field hockey, Susan Ray, middle school tennis, Joe Doan, middle school cross country. Chris Jackson, eighth grade boys soccer. And as of the 4th of June, Keith reports that he has openings in varsity field hockey, JV field hockey, JV girls soccer at the high school level, assistant girl cross country, seventh grade field hockey, seventh grade boys soccer, eighth grade girls soccer, and seventh grade girls soccer at the middle school. The high school positions have been advertised in-house and in the Press Herald and the middle school positions are posted in-house. Okay, is there a motion? Keith. I'm sorry, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was one of the K ones. Okay, okay sorry. <laughs> I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for fall 1999. Okay. Seconded by Beth, thank you. Um, discussions or questions, comments? 
I just have a question, um, Keith. I know that the uh, I have a little interest in this. This uh, the uh, field hockey um, positions, and so does Beth. I think um, the field hockey position was advertised in the paper. Do we do we have any response at all? Does it look like we have any response? None so far. Okay. Okay. Um, other questions or comments? Um, seeing, none, seeing none, then all those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation? 7-0. Uh, nominations to co-curricular fee positions for the fall. Okay, this is an even longer list. At the high school department heads, technology, Betsy Nielsen, English, Sarah Franklin, guidance, Sharon Merrill, fine arts, Norm Richardson, foreign language, Judy Liberty, World Language, Judy Liberty. Social Studies, Ray Cooper. Math, Elaine Brownell. Science, Bill Brewington. Health and PE, Andrea Kaya. Special Ed, Tina Johnson. And Research <coughs> Coordinator, Joyce Bell. Junior Advisor, Doug Worthley. Senior Advisor, Elaine Brownell. Amnesty International, Ted Jordan. Book Talk, Joyce Bell. Chorus, Betsy Labway. Cultural Exchange, Bill Brewington. Debate, Greg Zandi. Drama Performance Fall, Drama Performance Spring, Theater Class Productions and Theater Management, Dick Mullen, Theater Assistant Barbara Kelly, Literary Magazine, Hannah Jones and Susan Giffen, Math Team, David Greeley and Roger Ryu, Natural Helpers, Katie Lisa and Andrea Kaya, and Student Advisory Council, David Perry. Moving on to the middle school, team leaders, Bruce Lynn for the fifth grade, Gary Reckitt for the sixth grade, Bev Bisbee for the seventh grade, Mary McGuire for the eighth grade, World Language, Kathleen Reva, Special Education, Tammy Thatcher, Art Fridays, Leslie Brown, Chorus, fifth and sixth grade, Joanne Lee, and Chorus, seventh and eighth grade, Joanne Lee, Instrumental Music, Terry White, Math Team, Tom Wilbur, Volunteer Club, Pam Vos, Yearbook, Nancy Scott and Michelle Gagney, Computer, Bev Bisbee, French and Spanish Club, Suzanne Janelle, Outdoor Experience, Bruce Lynn, Gary Record, Beverly Bisbee, Mary McGuire. Math Club, Andrew Lomack McNair. Drama Club, Steve Price, and there are still some vacancies. Carmen can tell you about it if you so desire. Tom Eismeyer reports at the at Pond Cove. He has team leaders, kindergarten, Amy Karen, Nancy Rollis for grade one, Rindy Martin for grade two, Ren Wilkinson for grade three, Sue Welch for grade four, Sherry Robinson for Allied Arts and Susie Safer for SPED. And system-wide, we have Certification Committee. Pon Cove is Mary Dulock, Middle School, Mary McGuire, High School, Belinda Snell, and at large, Sherry Robinson. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations as listed. Thank you, Keith. Second, Jen? Question? Yes, John. My packet didn't include all those areas that uh, you should have had all of them except for the, the middle, middle school, school you were given up gave oh I had those passed those out tonight you should have gotten those tonight it was part of the additional material yes. yeah, in the back sorry about that yes Peter uh, there is one change that came in uh, right after I sent these over uh, foreign language department had uh, Judy Liberty uh, after nine years has decided it's time for a change and so uh, I'm in the process of Scratch. So it's not foreign language and it's not world language, it's vacant. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks. Okay, other um, questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? And that's 7 0. Moving on to uh, superintendent's nomination to fill teacher vacancies for 99 yes. 2000. I have a couple. High school math, Douglas Sharman. Uh, Linda Paul for the grade three. This is a one-year position. As you know, Linda Paul has been doing half-time kindergarten, and we did eliminate one half-time uh, section, or one section of kindergarten, which is a half-time position. And so Linda will be moving on to the grade three maternity leave position. And we have Matt Whaley for the grade seventh science position. That's replacing Sin Curry. Uh, you have another one on your list, but we will have to delete that for this evening. We don't have all the paperwork done. And we have Conrad Bertium, who will be moving from a point eight to a full-time world language position at the middle school. And Diane Reed, who will move from a point eight to a full-time speech therapy position in the special ed department. Okay, is there a motion? Did she, did she read the high school one? I'm sorry, am I rushing I'm, you along? No. No, that was it. 
Um, yes. I move that we accept the um, superintendent's nominations for teachers for the fall 99. Thank you. Seconded by Marie. Questions or comments on these recommendations? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's 7 0. And uh, we'll now move on to uh, proposal for the high school French exchange. Right. You had some information in your packet, and Peter is here, and David Perry is here, mm -hmm. and they'd be happy to expound or answer questions or whatever your pleasure. David, would you like to uh, perhaps give us just a, a little bit of an overview? We, we have the proposal that we've all read as part of our packet. Is this the third time I'm before you on this? It's the charm, right? <laughs> third time First time we were working with one organization, couldn't find a school. Second time we changed organizations. Found a school, was too late in the year for them to put together a, a group. But I did make the contact with the um, Lycée uh, Aristide Briand in Saint-Nazaire on the Loire Valley, uh, on the mouth of the Loire River, um, on the Atlantic Ocean in France. Um, they're excited about coming. We're excited to have a school and someone that I can correspond with now. Um, I've even been emailed by another teacher within the system who would like to set up a correspondence with her English class and possibly a French class that I have, although I've responded to her that it's kind of late in the year for us to do that, but next year perhaps we can get something going. So I think we have everything in place. All we need now is for the school year to start and for me to um, get a group together so we can pull this off. I hope. Uh, most likely, as in the previous proposals, we would be going in February and they would be coming back to visit us in April. Um, perhaps later on, if this link does solidify, we could change the times. February is a difficult time for us to travel because a lot of students have um, athletic conflicts then, where April is an easier time to travel because it's a preseason and it's, it's easier to leave preseason than to leave in the middle of a state championship. I know at least one student this year on the Hispanic exchange trip who had to make that choice of either playing on a winter team or going on the exchange trip, and he chose to go on the exchange trip. So it's something we're always faced with. But I'm excited. It's a wonderful area to be in. Um, Sonia Medina knows the area well. She has spent summers in the area. It's, um, they're very, um, Geographically, it's very similar to Portland in that it is a port city. Shipbuilding is a major industry of the area. Tourism is a major industry of the area. Uh, the area is a rocky coastline similar to uh, the Portland area. Um, populations are about the same in the, in the Portland area and the San Jose area. Um, so I'm excited about this, and I'm looking for your support and approval, and this is going to be it. We're going to do it this time. Do you get to go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you need any school board members? Yeah. <laughs> um, if I do, I'll be sure to call you. Uh, I have one question. Which is, if you have more students than there is space, how is that determination made? Um, there is a protocol for selecting students. It goes to students who are in upper level courses and who have the highest standing in the number of years at the high school. So we would take seniors in French 61 and 51 over then you go down to uh, juniors who are in higher level courses and sophomores in higher level courses. We haven't had an exchange trip in a while. I think there's going to be a fair pool of uh, seniors and juniors who would be interested. I don't know if there will be space for sophomores um, in next year's trip, although we do have a, um, a crew of qualified sophomores who would be in the minimum course, which is third year. We don't take anyone under third year. If, if this works out, is this something? And that you'd be able to do every year? So that you, it would, if, would have the if we have the population to support it every year, and if they have a population to support it every year, then that is something that potentially could be done. In the past, it, back in the day, it was done every year, back in the 80s. Um, but it's been more difficult to establish that in the 90s. Um, other questions? Um, for David. I have a question. I was going to make a motion that we um, approve the request for the uh, French exchange program. Okay. Um, I'll en entertain that motion. Is there a second? Second. John? It's like an auction again. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, any, any other questions or concerns, comments from, the, from board members? Good luck, David. 
Um, all those in favor? 7-0. And Mr. Ridge is going to be doing some advanced for work for us this summer, so we'll I'll be waiting for his report. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you very much. That's terrific. Thanks, David. Okay, let's move on to um, teacher retirement. I have one request for teacher retirement. This is from Nancy Miles. Nancy has been a part-time special education teacher for us for the past seven years, and I recommend that you accept her retirement request with regret. Okay, is there a motion? Jennifer? I make a motion that we accept um, Nancy Miles' resignation for retirement. Retirement. With regret. Okay, second. Second. Beth, um, questions or comments? Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. <coughs> Moving on to um, a confirmation of uh, approval of JV football as a club sport. Um, we want to just make that. Is a motion. Okay. Um, we had met in workshop um, with the proponents of uh, uh, JV football as a club sport. Um, we met with them actually twice. Uh, the first time was to um, uh, hear the proposal and to propose questions uh, back uh, from board members. They came back, did a terrific job, I think, um, the last time we met with them, which was just a week or so ago. And uh, the indication at that time from board members was that they would approve um, this uh, uh, proposal, this JV football proposal as a club sport. So I guess I would look for a motion at this time. Kevin. I move that we grant club status to junior varsity football team. And second it. I need a second. Marie, other questions or comments about this proposal? Um, I'm just commenting that I don't think we've ever officially voted on a club status before, and is that something we plan to do? I know we didn't do it for Nordic skiing or anything. Um, I, my sense is that it's, yeah, my do. sense is that it's a significant enough yeah responsibility that we're assuming in terms of um, risk management and so on that we probably should do it. It's probably a good idea to do, but we might just want to keep that in mind then that mm -hmm. other ones would follow that process. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Other comments or questions? Uh, just uh, thanks to the group that organized or is organizing it, they've uh, really got all the bases covered, I think. Uh, I said this in the workshop uh, the other night, and I'll say it again, that we just have to be careful about football getting away from us in terms of once it starts rolling, it's, it's, uh, it becomes an obsession in some school districts. And I think we have to be very careful of that. And we also have to be careful, obviously, of the expense that can be incurred with football if it does get out of hand. So, but I will uh, uh, vote for the motion. I don't, I don't want Keith to comment on the cost, but do you have any other comments in terms of the... Other than okay. just to agree with what Beth said, I, I, I think it's a good idea for the board to approve, approve these club status programs. Uh, I do most of the work, and I like the idea of the school board approved. <laughs> okay. Um, and approving it as club status really has no other um, ties to it. It is approving it for club status. Um, there's been some interpretation that that is a commitment, that's a long-term commitment, it's really, it is really not. Um, George, we might just want to confirm that there are no school funds spent on it, and, um, but they do have to abide by all school rules and policies, and this is the status and until it, they'd have to come before us again to have it changed. Right, and that is um, what club status is, thanks. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's seven zero. Okay, we're gonna move on to the first reading of um, policies and there are four of them. Um, June 3rd policy subcommittee meeting. Uh, the entire policy committee is reporting out um, four new policies or four amended policies, uh, whichever for uh, first reading. The first of the is an affirmative action EEO statement that really should just say we don't discriminate, but because of legal necessities, this policy has been amended to state 
The Cape Elizabeth Public School System is committed to affirmative action and committed to maintaining a work environment that is free from discrimination, promotes mutual understanding, and encourages the unique contribution of every individual. As an equal opportunity employer, all people will be treated equally and without regard to race, color, sex, religion, disability, age, ancestry, national origin, sexual orientation, family and or marital status. Policy goes on to say that we will uh, obey all applicable federal and state statutes and regulations that eliminate discrimination. Okay. That's the first. Are there comments about this policy? Um, or any feedback for the policy subgroup? I just think it's really important um, for us to not <coughs> sort of rubber stamp this policy. Um, it's one that I feel uh, very strongly about um, in terms of uh, uh, making a value statement. And the value um, statement is saying that we do place a value on diversity and that um, we are interested in ensuring that we are able to attract and um, retain the best possible uh, people uh, to serve our, um, our uh, uh, school community and our students. <clears throat> um, it's also a statement, um, again, not a hollow statement, I don't believe, uh, that what we are trying to do is to create an environment uh, where everyone um, is feeling welcomed and feeling safe as a member of the, um, of the, uh, the work group here in the school district. Want to move on to the next? The next student is, uh, next student, uh, next policy is harassment of students. This one has been kicking around for quite a while um, and we're finally getting on with it. Uh, harassment of students by any person or persons is prohibited conduct, is a violation of board policy and may constitute illegal discrimination under state and federal laws. Harassment includes, but is not limited to verbal and physical abuse based on race, color, sex, religion, disability, age, appearance, ancestry, national origin, sexual orientation, family and or marital status. Each building principal or his her designee shall develop the necessary administrative guidelines including a student harassment complaint procedure to implement this policy. The superintendent or his her designee will investigate complaints of harassment in accordance with the student harassment complaint procedure. School employees, students, and parents will be, formed, be informed of the policy procedure through handbooks and or other means selected by the school administration. That is a new policy. That's um, a brand new policy. Comments about this or questions? I, I, again, I would just reiterate what I said before. We are, um, it's important to start with um, strong statements of value and um, the two that uh, Kevin has just presented are both strong statements of value um, of, uh, of um, ensuring uh, that uh, people feel safe as students within the learning environment and, and uh, staff within the, uh, the work environment. Next policy, Kevin. The next policy is a revised policy, new board member orientation. This policy was originally adopted in 1992 and was meant to include newly elected uh, board members in school board business prior to their being um, sworn into office. Um, we're not sure how this happened, but the change is specifically that the original policy invited um, newly elected board members to be involved in executive sessions. Based on a request from a newly elected board member, we looked into this and based on legal advice, both from our attorneys and from the town side, we've been informed quite strongly that people who have not been sworn into office should not be involved in executive session issues. So this policy has been changed to 
remove the word including executive sessions and, in, and put in its place excluding executive sessions. Okay. Questions or comments about this policy? The last one, Kevin? Oh, I'm sorry. Jim. I rise as a culprit in treating everyone who's there in this policy. And I, uh, I rise to ask for the board of leniency and to my discipline. I'm going to get a probationary period. I'm going to have to help the young folks. And we think you'll probably pay your dues by the end of the three years. Yes, <laughs> the end of three months. <laughs> Yes, John. Uh, I would like to cordially invite Jim to attend the executive session after the conclusion of our regular meeting tonight under the old policy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess I'd like to take Jennifer. the blame for letting Jim know about the original policy. <laughs> Thank you also, Jennifer. Um, <laughs> Other questions or comments about the, um, the new board member orientation policy, first reading? If not, uh, Kevin, you can move on with the last. Last policy is another policy that's been kicking around for a long time. Apparently several years ago we had a bit of a truancy policy that then went away, so we dropped the, uh, dropped the idea of a truance pol truancy policy only to discover in passing that it's required by state law. So we are adopting a rather wordy truancy policy that essentially says that any student who is, uh, has 10 full days of non-excused absences or seven consecutive school days will be considered truant, that we are appointing the lucky assistant principals to be the attendance coordinators to track these kids down and find out what the problem is and to uh, bring that information back to whatever committee is necessary and appropriate. Uh, the full language is available for anyone else who uh, is so inclined to read it. And it should probably be pointed out that we do indeed track absences already. This is um, a boilerplate um, policy that ensures that, that we're um, compliant with um, the requirements. Other, other comments? Um, okay. Can I go yes. back to the previous policy? Yes. Are we, are we finished with that one? Um, truancy, yes, I believe we are. Uh, I just had some questions about the affirmative action uh, one. Uh, Kevin, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but I was wondering if, if, if I could have a definition of what affirmative action is meant by it in this policy. First sentence, committed to affirmative action. I guess I just need to know what, what that means. Since I don't have my policy uh, manual with me, I'm going to beg off on that until I have it with me. Okay. Now, is that something that we have defined in our policy? We, it is defined in the policy manual. Okay. And Thank there you. are also pages and pages of administrative guidelines related to the implementation of the affirmative action policy. So it's the, it's, we don't have our own special definition of what affirmative action is. It's that's correct. I mean, this we we're doing two things. I think with this policy, and George, who brought it to my attention, can clarify this. But one of the things is that I never liked about this policy was it sounded like the only reason we were doing it was because it was a matter of law, rather than the right thing to do for our employees. So that was an issue for me. The second thing is that since the original policy was put in place, it seemed that there, were some, there has been some additional language um, going on in related uh, regards to sexual orientation, family or marital status. Um, and I, as well as George and the committee at the time, agreed that this should, you know, that it should be revisited. I uh, totally agree with the, the second half of the, of the new paragraph here as an equal opportunity employer. My concern is that people will be treated equally without regard to all of these things uh, is, is counter to what my idea of what affirmative action is. You're some sort of hacking back to a quota kind of concept? Yeah, some people call affirmative action reverse discrimination. Mm -hmm, and that's, mm -hmm. that's, 
That's, that's why I just raised the question. And I'll, and I'll spend some time reading the other, the other definitions. Uh, but I imagine I'll be bringing this up again. The, the old policy actually combined the two. Um, this, the piece that we were attempting to sort of um, create as a statement of value is, the, is really the EEO statement. And, and I, I'm all in favor of that part of it. All right. And um, the reason why it shows in bold in terms of the Cape Elizabeth Public School System is committed to affirmative action is because I think um, we changed some of the wording that was just attached to that one sentence. But, um, but basically, that is really not a change from the existing policy. The words affirmative action and not a change, they, they exist in policy today. Okay. And at risk of being scrutinized by 5,000 resident lawyers, we probably <laughs> yeah, should I, not, not say anything more about affirmative action or try to define it. Um, but certainly, we could, we could look at that and even separating the two, I know that the um, the model that, that um, I shared with Kevin is one that, that, doesn't, that does not have affirmative action as part of it. It really is the EEO statement. So we, we may look at a second reading with that. Okay. Other questions on any of the policies? Actually, I do have one. I don't want to uh -oh. open up a can of worms here, Somewhere. but um, uh -oh. with this new board member orientation, um, The excluding executive sessions, at least I think when we were discussing it, uh, evolved around expulsion hearings. And as John was inviting Jim to attend tonight, that's a whole different issue. And I'm not sure the confidentiality problem is the same. And is that something we want to be more specific about in the policy? Um, See, I, I guess my recommendation would be to take the words executive session out, but not say excluding executive session. In other words, not put it in there so that you're overtly inviting them to participate, but not, not excluding them either. Any, any executive session where there's a, where's a, there's a third party interest um, right. is, is I mean, primary. A big difference an expulsion between... hearing, a discipline hearing for an employee, right. et cetera. The other side of it is, I think, that if you, if the topic for the executive session was a topic such that it was, the implications were going to extend over a long period of time, such as <coughs> signing a three-year contract with an employee group, right. then in that case, you perhaps would want to invite that person right. in. So, so that's why I would just take the words out, and that would leave it open to you to then determine on specific occasions when you need to do that. I would entertain and welcome any word smithing that would allow <laughs> newly elected board members to sit in sessions that involve financial matters, but do not involve student or personnel matters. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would like to wordsmith this for me, I'd be happy Prior to take it. to the second reading. Right. Yeah. The, the only thing you run into is it can appear to be arbitrary if for some reason certain board members wanted the sworn in person to attend an executive session and certain didn't and it gets sort of, I can see there's gonna be muddiness. Or people who have had a huge interest in the budget discussions would might petition the board to be invited to an executive session um, for financial reasons. Do you know what I mean? It, it could get very muddy. Um, I think the law is really clear about when a board can have an executive session and for what purpose. And the laws are very clear when we can meet and discuss things and they have to be public meetings. And I guess um, I would think you wouldn't want to get into inviting um, just sworn in board members to executive sessions because it might get muddy later with other issues. Board members who are not sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Newly elected. Newly, newly elected, elected, not sworn in. Yeah. Um, I just think you might have problems later. And it's just not that long between getting sworn in, I mean, getting elected and getting sworn in that you can't bring somebody up to date really quickly. Okay. Yes, I, I tend to agree with Beth. I, I think the executive session is a privilege for the sworn in board. But I also think it's, it's to the 
up to the will of the board as to who else could be in that executive session with, with the, the current board. Uh, so I guess I agree with Cynthia that probably it shouldn't be listed, you know, the, the word executive session probably shouldn't be in the policy because I think it's really up to the, to the board. We often have administrators or teachers or other people in executive session with us when they, when they have the, the information that, that we need. Um, Well, you can't just take that sentence out because no, it has to, it's invited to all meetings. As Kevin says, it needs to be wordsmith. Right. It needs to be cleaned up. Other comments for the policy subgroup to here, which is all of us, I suppose. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, somewhere along the line, I received, I believe, from the Duke Albany's office, uh, a detailed reading of the statute that pertains to the boards and the superintendent. Would it be wise to maybe go through them and ask them for a clarification, as well as I know you already spoke. We, well, we spoke to MSMA, which would basically be the same as the so you've already spoken office, to, right? Yes. And you spoke to Pringle and to and to, and to the Lane, right? Yeah. Other comments? Okay, um, Jim. It might be longer than three years of probation. <laughs> Just, just By the end, you're going to be wishing you don't have to go to executive right. sessions. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. Um, at this point, um, I, what I'd like to do is to review the um, upcoming meetings and or special events. Uh, there will be a special school board meeting, which will happen on Monday, June 14th. Um, that's um, this coming Monday, 6 p.m. for the purpose of ex entering executive session to conduct an expulsion hearing. Um, rather, not so pleasant business, uh, followed by the swearing in of uh, new school board members elected in the May election. That would happen on that same evening here in the council chambers at 7.30 p.m. And that's immediately followed at 7.45 by a school board organizational meeting. And, uh, and Jim and I have talked about what goes on there in terms of uh, committee assignments and so on. Um, the school board workshop meeting will be June 22nd in uh, the high school library at 6 p.m. It starts earlier than what we usually start. Um, and the topic at 6 p.m. will be learning results, basically um, checking in with our learning results goals for the school year. And at 6.45, uh, we will briefly discuss kindergarten issues. Tom, it's important for any, if you do a mailing before the end of the year to be sure that the, those parents know that that meeting is going to be 6.45 and not 7, because we originally had scheduled for 7. Um, and uh, lastly, and very importantly, high school graduation, a reminder again, Friday, June 11th, uh, 2 p.m. at Fort Williams, weather permitting. And Peter, if, if it moves from there to the high school fields, it's still open seating, but if you need to go inside, you will then be restricted in terms of space? Uh, no, it's still open seating. Uh, the only thing that uh, we could look at, although I'm talking with Sue today, I, I really don't think we'll think have a problem. have space for anyone. Uh, we, Sue has, uh, has mentioned to me that in past uh, events, uh, they've been able to get close to 900 chairs on the uh, gym floor. We have 1,000 out for uh, outside, plus we'd have the bleachers, so I really don't think that we'd have uh, restricted seating at all. So the public is invited One to One thing that we were considering was whether we would give tickets so that uh, uh, immediate family would have access to the floor seating. But um, uh, going over the numbers with Sue, I, I really don't think that we would need to uh, do that. The weather reports uh, are looking so very good right now, so we're hoping for the fort. Okay. Um, That's a beach day. <laughs> <laughs> no, a non-academic field trip, I think. Uh, the last item on, on our agenda is to, um, is the superintendent's request to enter executive session, so to uh, conclude this meeting and enter executive session. Right, I just need to add, a, it's to discuss negotiations. And also, I'd like to add to discuss a legal matter relative to the Ridge case. So okay. two topics. OK. Um, a motion? So moved. So moved and so seconded. So Marie, thanks. Um, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Seven, seven and uh, thank you all very much.
Hi, this is Bud Sawyer for Regional Waste Systems. A free service is being offered to residents of RWS member towns in the greater Portland area through October. Clean out your garage, take a hard look at that tool shed, and bring your old paint cans, pesticides, and other solvents to one of the 30 household hazardous collections scheduled in the area. Look for a flyer in the mail or call 800-805-8391 to see when your town's collection is scheduled or log on to the RWS website at regionalwaste.com. Thanks for doing your part to help the environment.